in section 7.2, we're multiplying and dividing rational expressions. You want to keep in mind all of those factoring techniques from chapter 6 so that we can simplify the results found by multiplying and dividing rational expressions. For the first example, we're going to find the product of the rational expression 8p minus 8 in the numerator over p in the denominator, 7p squared in the numerator over 9p minus 9 in the denominator. When you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the numerators and the denominators, and you can divide out any common factors. So begin by factoring each numerator and denominator when possible. The numerator, you can factor out a common factor of 8 to get 8 times the quantity of p minus 1, all divided by p. Now remember, you don't want to cross out any uh, variables if it's next to a plus or minus sign. You can only divide out common factors. In the numerator, uh, the second rational expression, 7p squared, in the denominator, you can factor out a 9, and you're left with 9 times the quantity of p minus 1. Now we can divide out any common factors here. We see a common factor of p minus 1 in the numerator and a p minus 1 in the denominator. Those you can divide out because it's next to multiplication. You can divide out common factors. Also, um, so let's go ahead and simplify the next result. Let's multiply the numerators together. 8 times 7p squared is 56p squared, and p times 9 is 9p. Now the p's, you can use the quotient rule for exponents. We have a p squared in the, in the numerator, p to the first in the denominator. Using the quotient rule, you subtract those exponents. So we can write this as 56p to the first power in the numerator over 9. That is our final simplified form when multiplying those rational expressions. Let's do part b. We want to make sure we factor first each numerator and denominator, and then we can divide out any common factors. The numerator can be factored into x plus 3 times x plus 2 looking at the factors of 6 that add up to 5 to get those binomial factors. The denominator, factors of 24 that add up to 11, are 8 and 3, so the factors are x plus 8 and x plus 3. We're going to multiply that by the next rational expression, factoring out a GCF of x in the numerator. We'll, left, we'll be left with x plus 8. And in the denominator, the trinomial can be factored into x minus 3 and x minus 1. Now we can look to see if there's any common factors in the numerator and the denominator that we can simplify. The x plus 3 in the numerator here can simplify with the x plus 3 in the denominator, and the x plus 8 in the numerator here can simplify with the x plus 8 in the denominator. So the result, when you simplify, multiply those rational expressions, we get x times the quantity, x plus 2, and in the denominator, the x minus 3 factor and x minus 1 factor. So that's how we write our answer. It's common to leave that in factored form rather than trying to multiply it out. Find each quotient and simplify. Now with division problems, when you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're going to begin by writing this problem so that we have four, negative 4k squared over 4k to the fifth and changing that division to a multiplication and writing the reciprocal so that we get 12k to the sixth in the numerator and 16k to the fourth. So we want to begin by changing that division to a multiplication. And then we can simplify these common factors. We have a 4 and a 4 in the numerator and the denominator. So 4 goes into 4 one time, 4 goes into negative 4, negative 1 times. And let's look at the 12 and the 16. There's a greatest common factor there of, of 4. So if we divide 12 by 4, we get 3. Divide 16 by 4, we get 4. So that's just simplifying fractions. Um, and then let's look at what we get here. If we multiply the, just the coefficients, we get a negative 3 in the numerator over 4 k to the second times k to the sixth. When we combine these two, the bases are the same. You add those exponents. So you get k to the eighth in the numerator. k to the fifth in the denominator. k to the fourth in the denominator becomes k to the ninth. 
Now we can simplify one more step using the quotient rule for exponents. You can subtract those exponents. You can write this as negative 3 fourths times k to the negative 1. If you take 8, subtract 9, you get negative 1. But it's common to write our final answer using positive exponents only. So we can simplify this and write our final answer as negative 3 divided by 4k. Let's continue with example B. Let's begin by changing this division problem to a multiplication problem. So we have 2 minus 2x over x, change division to multiplication, and then we get 3x squared in the numerator over 5 5x minus 5. Now we can factor. If we take out a common factor of 2, we get 1 minus x over x times 3, and if you take out a common factor of 5 in the denominator, you get 5 times quantity x minus 1. Now let's simplify this to get 2 times 3 is 6 times 1 minus x in the numerator, 5x times x minus 1 in the denominator. Now this, you should recognize um, a similar property that we looked at in the previous section where if you have a rational expression in the form of a minus b over b minus a, that is going to simplify to negative 1. So this will simplify. This entire um, quantity that I've circled in yellow here can be simplified as a negative 1. So this we can write as negative 6 over 5x as our simplified rational expression. Let's take the rational expression, the quantity y squared minus 11y plus 30 divided by the quantity y squared minus 36. All of that divided by the rational expression of the quantity y squared minus 9 in the numerator and y squared minus 3y minus 18 in the denominator. Let's begin by writing this division problem as a multiplication problem. So we have y squared minus 11y plus 30 in the numerator and y squared minus 36 in the denominator. Now we're going to change that division sign to multiplication and then write y squared minus 3y minus 18 in the numerator and y squared minus 9 in the denominator. Now we factor each of those parts. The first numerator can be factored into y minus 6 and y minus 5. The denominator is a difference of squares, so we can factor that as a y plus 6 and a y minus 6 factors. The numerator of the second rational expression can be factored into y minus 6 and y plus 3. The denominator can be factored into y plus 3 and y minus 3. Now we can see if there's any common factors here. We have a y minus 6 in the numerator that will divide out with the y minus 6 in the denominator. We have a y plus 3 in the numerator that can be simplified or divided out with the y plus 3 in the denominator. And that looks like it's about it. So we can write our final answer as a single fraction. In the numerator, we have factors y minus 5 and y minus 6. And in the denominator, we have factors y plus 6 and y minus 3. We can leave our answer in that form. We don't want to do cross out any other factors since there are no other common factors. Here we're multiplying. So be, let's begin by factoring each numerator and denominator. The factors of the first numerator, x squared minus 11x plus 10, can be factored into x minus 10 and x minus 1. The first denominator, x squared minus 11x plus 28, can be factored into x minus 7 and x plus 4, or x minus 4. The numerator, x squared minus 9x plus 20, can be factored into x minus 5 and x minus 4. The denominator, x squared minus 16x plus 60, can be factored into x minus 10 and x minus 6. Now let's look to see if there's any common factors that we can divide out. We have an x minus 10 in the numerator and the denominator that can be divided out. And we have, oops, made a mistake here. 
That numerator should have had factors of x minus 5 and x minus 4. I wrote the wrong factor. But we see that there is a common factor, x minus 4, that could also be divided out. So we can write our final answer as the factors x minus 1 and x minus 5 in the numerator and the factors x minus 7 and x minus 6 in the denominator. Let's change this division problem to a multiplication problem and then factor each numerator and denominator. So in the first fraction, 2k squared plus 8k plus 6 in the numerator and k squared minus 9 in the denominator, we change a division to multiplication and then write 2k minus 6 in the numerator, 4k squared plus 18k plus 14. Now in the first numerator, there's a greatest common factor of 2. So let's begin by factoring the 2 out of the numerator to get the quantity k squared plus 4k plus 3. And that denominator, k squared minus 9, recognize that as a difference of squares, so the factors are k plus 3 and k minus 3. The numerator, the common factor is 2, so you get 2 times the quantity k minus 3. And then the denominator, we can take out a common factor of 2 to get 2k squared plus 9k plus 7. Now there, it looks like there's a lot that we can divide out, but we still want to continue to factor um, these both of these trinomials. So if we factor that first trinomial, the factors of k squared plus 4k plus 3 are k plus 3 and k plus 1. I'm going to rewrite the denominator factored, the numerator. Now the, the trinomial 2k squared plus 9k plus 7 can be factored into 2k plus 7 and k plus 1. You can go back and review the AC method for factoring trinomials in chapter 6. Now let's look to see what we can divide out. We have a k plus 3 in the numerator that we'll divide out with the k plus 3 in the denominator. The k minus 3 in the numerator will divide out with the k minus 3 in the denominator. The k plus 1 in the numerator will divide out with the k plus 1 factor in the denominator. This factor of 2 in the numerator will divide out with a factor of 2. And then what we have left, nothing else can be divided out. We're going to end up with a 2 in the numerator and a 2k plus 7 in the denominator. That's our final simplified answer.